I may have made a mistake in the previous video. I think the previous protest recap, I said it was 194. It was actually 193. This is 194. Day 194, protesting in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. I accidentally recorded the video and did this. You know, the classic where, like, you start recording and then you do this without realizing that it's recording in this mode. Uh, so I apologize for that. That one's, you know, that's my bad right there. That is my fucking bad. But wait, we did a long demonstration throughout downtown Elizabeth City. And so the second half was recorded uh, in a justifying way. So I'm going to just pl like show the second half of our protest. We went all through downtown. Uh, the kiddos that protest with us dressed up uh, for Halloween. And they wanted to show off their costumes to the entirety of downtown Elizabeth City. So we we obliged them as well. Of course, I am a, I'm always a lover of longer demonstrations. I like walking longer. I need to get some exercise. But again, folks, um, it's, it's getting colder again. Like when these protests started in April, it was chilly. And then we went through the entirety of summer. Entire summer months. And now here we are. It's November. And it's getting chilly again. And so, like, to me, it's like, you know, we've been protesting for more than half of a year. That's a long time. Right? It's, it's tiring. It's exhausting. For a lot of the people involved. And yet, you know, a lot of these people are still doing it almost every single day as much as they can. And that's the thing about it that really is, uh, you know, impressive to me is the resilience you know, you don't see as many people as you did in the first couple of weeks. But the fact that anyone in Elizabeth City would care enough to march every single day in this kind of fashion is, I think, incredible. Um, and so, again, the case of Andrew Brown Jr., I don't have any hopes that we're going to get a positive, positive resolution anytime soon. Um... I don't have many hopes that the governmental apparatus of Pasquotank County and Elizabeth City are going to change for the better. I don't. But what I do have hope for is that, you know, the people that march every day are more informed. They have built an ethic that they can use uh, in other situations, like God forbid another police shooting happens, right? Right you know, political experience, protesting experience. I mean, as well as, you know, we have kids that march with us every weekday for the most part. I mean, I'm sure this is going to affect their future as well. And to me, that's the win, is the community being more together in any capacity is a win. Uh, people organ being better organizers, people being more resilient when it comes to doing things every day, people building habits around activities that are political, such as protesting and other forms of organizing. Those are the wins. And I like I know that over the last, you know, month or two, I maybe have been focusing too much on the specific governmental apparatus of this area and how bad it is. And I think we cannot underscore just how horrible the mayor of Elizabeth City is. She's a disgusting human being, right? The police at the ECP uh, police station, right? As separate from the Pasco Tank police, they're all trash. They're all garbage. And I think that everyone knows that, right? Like when these protests started, I do remember a lot of people in the crowds, a lot of people, some people that still march out with us every once in a while as well, were pro-police, they would say, oh, it's just a few bad apples. Oh, it's just the sheriff's department. I'm seeing a lot less of that. You know, I, like people are learning that the people around them that are in government are horrible. And that is usually the first step to any sort of reform. Um, the people in the city council are trash. The people in Pasquotank County Board of Commissioners are trash. The police are trash. The sheriffs are trash. The district attorney is trash. The local representatives are trash, right? The state representatives are trash. The national representative is trash. Every single politician that represents this area is garbage. There are zero people that are worth anything whatsoever at all. Because if they were worth anything, we would have seen their value 
over the last seven months. But wait, I forgot. They wrote Black Lives Matter on the street. I forgot. Yeah, that's right. They actually think that that's a win. Something that they could have done at any time. Something that they should have done probably last year. But Andrew Brown Jr. gets murdered. We write Black Lives Matter on the street. Are we even? Come on. That's the best they got. If the best you have is wasting three quarters of a million dollars to funnel and launder to police departments so they can beat the shit out of the people that live in your city, and then at the end of that you write Black Lives Matter on the street, that's the best you can do? I don't think so. But again, we need to focus on the wins as well. And the wins are that there's more people that are more politically aware, that are seeing the world now for what it really is, and that's horrible, that know that their leaders are horrible, that know how to protest and organize more. And again, I hope to God that someone else doesn't have to get killed before people start to kick into high gear. Personally, I think we should be in high gear all the time. That's my opinion. But sometimes people need breaks. I understand that. But I hope that, you know, people take these experiences and they bring them forward and they don't let them, uh, you know, cause fear. Because there are a lot of people that are afraid of protesting because of the police force that we saw in Elizabeth City. That is the wrong lesson to learn. They want you to be afraid. That's the whole point of dressing up as a riot cop and having tear gas grenade launchers and school buses and fucking LRADs and like all that. It's to make you afraid. But what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of them? Thugs in riot costumes? Or are you afraid of doing what's right? Are you afraid of doing the right thing? If the answer is you're afraid of the riot thugs, but you want to do the right thing, you believe in the right thing, sometimes it's worth getting a little dirty. Sometimes. And obviously, you know, you don't... You got to make all your decisions with all the context, you know. But I'm just saying... You know, they're going to try to do everything that they can to keep you in submission. The state does not want people to organize every single day. The state wants people to hate each other, to keep themselves divided, right? To worry and squabble, kill each other. Look at the crime rates in Elizabeth City. The government, the city council loves the crime. The police love the crime. That's why they don't ever solve any of the homicides in Elizabeth City. Why bother? They love the idea that people in Elizabeth City are too busy killing each other and bickering and arguing to do anything. That's great to them. That's a win. Because it means less work for them. It means they don't need to worry as much and they can keep collecting their paychecks. People need to organize as a community and go against the government. That's the only way for anything to ever happen. We need to get rid of all of these garbage can motherfuckers like the mayor, the city council, the county commissioners. Get rid of them all and install new people that actually give a fuck. But then also people that actually uh, are spending that time educating themselves on how government works so that they can get into office, grease the wheels for justice, and do everything that they can. Because a lot of people who are maybe well-meaning become elected, they don't know anything about how government works, and then they get, you know, drowned in the process. Then the process consumes them. And they think, oh, I can't do anything because the process, the process. That's another trap. That's another quicksand trap for justice is people love to think, all right, we're going to elect someone, they're going to go in there and change everything. But wait, what are all these rules? What are, you know, so I mean, I'm just saying, we got to focus on the wins and we got to stop focusing on the losses. But I mean, we can't also pretend that there aren't any losses because there are. There are absolutely giant L's. They have to be analyzed and they have to be understood so that they don't happen again in the future. Anyway, that's day 194, folks. Every time I do one of these, I make it like a soliloquy.